everybody. Good morning, Mumbai. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that, and I've never been in Mumbai giving a talk. So thank you for letting me for this opportunity. Um, so basically, my name is Anu, and I am the CEO of Nextrop. Uh, in one sentence, Nextrop basically partners with urban water utilities and lets people like you know when the water comes. Uh, a little bit more about myself. I know you're wondering, wait, you look Indian, but you talk funny. Yeah, so my parents are from India, and uh, I was born and raised in California. So I just recently quit my job um, this August, and I have moved to India. So that's kind of my story. Thank you for having me. It's been really great. Um, so enough about me, I want to hear about you guys. So if one person can tell me what you did last Monday morning as soon as you got up. Do we have somebody who can tell me that? Somebody with a mic. Does anybody have a mic? Or just stand up. You, sir, <laughs> in the front. What did you do last Monday morning? <laughs> okay, so, okay, so when you got up, what did you do after that? You got up, I'm guessing. Start out your day. Brush your teeth. You heard, okay, so sir, I'm guessing you brushed your teeth. <laughs> so, and then after that? I washed my face, I got ready as usual. Okay, washed your face, got ready as usual, and then what? Had, had your juice. And then, I'm sorry? And then went to the office. Okay, so I'm guessing that's a typical schedule for most people. You know, you get up, brush your teeth, you know, have a shower, have your juice, go off to work. So now, imagine you lived... In, a, um, in an area like Hubli, Karnataka, where water only comes once every five days through your tap. Okay, so let's imagine that. Now, let's imagine water's supposed to come on Thursday morning. So you get up at 5 a.m., ready to collect your water because, you know, you're going to collect it, then you're going to take a shower, you know, you're going to get ready and go off to work. Now, let's imagine that it doesn't come. Now what are you going to do? So you have a couple choices. Are you going to A, Skip work to collect water, B, tell your wife to stay home from work or cancel all of her engagements that day to collect water, C, pull your, kid, pull your child out of school so that he or she can collect water, D, buy water from a tanker which is about three to five times the cost, or E, just use the borewell water which you know made your neighbor sick last week, but it's your only other option. I mean, that's usually, so that's what 90% of the South Asian families are facing in India and 33% of the families in Africa and South America. And this isn't rural, this is urban India, okay? So what, so what the problem is, is intermittent water. The pro, so let me describe it to you really quick. The water utility works like this. They turn on the water in one area and then they provide it to the household. And then they shut it off and provide it to the other area. And this is great in practice, except the only way people know that water's coming is through the newspaper. Now, that's fine if water came all the time and there were no power outages or pipe breaks. Because if that happens, the water's off schedule and the newspaper's no longer right. And as you know, in India, that happens all the time. So nobody really knows when their water comes. So let me talk about a story. This man, who's going to come up <laughs> pretty soon, um, came into our office on Thursday, this past Thursday. Comes in, is this the next drop office? Yes, what did we do? <laughs> He's like, I want your service. And so we asked, okay, yeah, great, you know, why? Apparently what happened was water was supposed to come that morning, but he woke up and there was no water. He calls his friends, he asked, hey, what happened to the water? Apparently water came the day before because they were fixing pipes and his friends got the next drop message, he missed it. So he missed water that week. So that's kind of giving you an idea of what the problem is. So what do we do? How do we, that's the man right there. He's very nice, Canada Bank Manager. <laughs> so how do we deal with this solution? Or what do we do? How do we get this information? We actually partner with the valve man, the guy who actually turns on and off the water. So what we do is he calls our interactive voice response system. Instead of writing it down in his logbook, he just uses the phone he already has. He calls Next Drop, says I'm providing water, and we provide that message to all of the residents. So the way it works in practice is this. Um, basically, the valveman calls. Say he's opening his wa the water in your area at 10 a.m. He'll call the Next Drop system and say, I'm opening the water at 10 a.m. So then we get that message, and then it's actually displayed on a live dashboard for the utilities to see. And then after they see that, we actually send a message to all of the residents. 
alerting them either A, your water is going to come in 30 to 60 minutes, B, the water's on right now, or C, there's a last minute change in schedule. One thing I didn't mention was that while we provide this message to residents, we actually simultaneously allow the utility to better manage their irregular supply of water because they're operating in the dark right now. And so with, this, with the previous dashboard, they actually have the ability to track and manage their water. So th actually the part that I'm most excited about is the feedback loop and the transparency we provide into the system. So when the valve man calls, we actually call two people in that area to make sure the water's on. So let's imagine the valve man calls, I turned on the water, three people say, no, there's no water. We have a problem, right? Either the valve man gave us a false update or there might be an actual problem that needs addressing. So we tell the engineers, hey, there might be an issue. Now he can actually address it. So I think either way, we provide a new level of transparency into this existing system. So uh, why do we care? Um, you know, besides the actual stress that uh, we go through on a daily basis, which I'm hoping you kind of got the idea, back in grad school, um, we, mo we figured out how big a problem this was. We looked at one tier two city in India with one million people, Hubli Karnataka. In it, we estimated that each family loses seven days per year just waiting for the water. That's it, waiting. Which translates to 1.4 million days lost for the whole city. And that we monetized to about 70 million rupees in opportunity cost for one city in India. In addition to that, we estimated that there's about 300,000 school days lost from kids pulling, you know, getting water. Um, the, the title slide was actually our associate Aditi, who's in the audience today, actually clicked this picture, and the girl told her she was actually pulled out of school today to collect water. So it's a real impressing problem. So uh, what are we going to do about it? Everyone asks, how did you guys come up with this idea? It was actually my friend Emily, uh, who is doing her PhD in, um, at UC, in the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department at UC Berkeley, and she was studying intermittent water. She wanted to look at water quality. Now the problem with that, as you can imagine, is if you need water samples, you need to know where the water is. And to do that, you need to know what time the water comes on. So as she was doing her research, she spent most of her time just waiting for the water. So she realized if this was a problem for her, this must be a problem for most people in the city. So she brought it back to UC Berkeley, Top Amparik School of Information, um, Social Enterprise for Information Technology, and we got a group of five graduate students together and that's how NextDrop was born. Um, so where are we going from here? Basically, my favorite stat on here, so we started our company. We're officially a company, which is very exciting. Uh, I moved here in August. My favorite stat is that we have 150 paying customers to date, um, which to me, the best piece of advice I got was charge and charge early. But as an entrepreneur, it's really scary because that means that people can say no, <laughs> which I would rather just imagine everyone loves our service. But it was really good because we found out that people actually are willing to pay for it. So that was great. Um, and where are we going? Basically, right now we're in the water vertical, but our real innovation, everyone calls us a technology company, but we're really not. We, well, we are and we're not. We're human sensors. What we're really doing is we're turning the valve men into sensors. And they're giving us that information and we just re redistribute it. So imagine if I can do this in water, why can't I do this in power? Or for pension payments, or you know, for your LPG gas, or your voter's card. So essentially what we want to do is be the one-stop smart grid shop. And that's where we're going. Um, I think the biggest challenge that we face is actually incentivizing people to give us this information, the valve men. Um, what I don't want to do is pay them. I think that's the first thing everyone thinks of, oh, why don't you just pay him? Well, the problem with that is you have people on salary and it's just, uh, you've seen government employees in salary, you know? We want to try different things. Like we're looking at Wikipedia, why does that work? Or Yelp, why do people voluntarily contribute information to a system? What sort of other incentives can we give them? And that's what we're really focusing on. And we're, being, we're pretty successful right now. Um, and I think, I'm ending up here. The last thing I want to encourage everybody is to question everything, not to like spread paranoia or anything, but mostly because that was the way we even came up with this idea, you know, because we question why is that so? And it's the only way we're actually innovating on the ground right now. We took everything that we thought we knew about a system and threw it out the window and we learned, you know, and that's how we're innovating and that's how we came up with this problem. And that's the biggest thing that I've learned on the ground in India thus far. 
And I think that if we are supposed to be solving these pressing problems of tomorrow, that's the only way we're gonna do it, you know, is by questioning, you know, problems like intermittent water. So, thank you so much.